Moving on in our time value of money basics with the process still in front of us, let's look at some things about payment. So the question is, if $100 invested today grows into $1,000 in 10 years at a 10% rate of return, if there is also an additional payment made of how much? So let's think about what the assumptions are in this case. When we document our assumptions, we have once again that $100 and that $100 is going to be invested today. So we're going to call that a present value. Now we have to be cautious in the way that you think about that because you can get the choice of negative input. That is my preference because Excel likes to think about investments as being a negative. So I'm going to put that $100 in as a negative because then it makes good sense to me that it grows into $1,000 at some point in the future. At what point is that? It looks to me like the number of periods in years is 10. And then also I get a rate that is annual. How do I know that it's annual? Because it's not labeled or qualified otherwise of 10%. With these assumptions down then, let's again throw a little breaker line over here and then go to the calculations. And this time, instead of typing my present value, future value, et cetera, I'm gonna point and click across everything because I know it needs to be present value. I know it needs to be future value. Payment is what I'm solving for. So let's make that bold. Let's make that yellow. And then let's make all three of these into the accounting format. Then we know we need number of periods. And we know we need rate. So notice it brought those labels down for me so I don't have to retype them. Now if I want to, I should be able to copy and paste that over. And once I reformat all these things, notice because I did a pick and point when I copy and paste, it will go ahead and bring down for me the consequent values that are right across from it. So let's do the same over here, and let's do the same over here. But then notice it did have a little of an annoying piece where it doesn't know the formats down below. So I do have to update the formats in there. Well, now that we're going to do the payment, let's go back to the first way that we had done it, which is under formulas, financial, and let's find the PMT formula where if I invest at 10% annually, and I do that over 10 years, and if I start with $1,000 negative, remember that's my initial investment, and then I want that to become $1,000, what it's going to return for me is this notion of $46.47 negative, which I think is helpful in this case because this is the additional amount of an annual payment needed to grow your investment to the $1,000 goal. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and show you this again in a simpler way and see if it makes a little bit more sense. So imagine this, imagine that I invested $100 and I wanted it to become $1,000, and I invested an additional $46.47 per year, and I did that at 10%, and I did that for 10 years, the question would be, how much would that grow into? So if we did a basic future value calculation here at 10% over 10 years, if you invested the 100 or uh, the 4647 annually and started with $100, well look, subject to a penny of rounding, it would tell you that grows into $1000. As I'm looking at this, let's go ahead and remind ourselves that we should always qualify these things to make sure that they're in the same terms so that when we think about the presentation of the numbers, you could add something like a comment in here where instead of just showing the number, we could type in a text box that says the additional payment of 4647 would be required. You have your $100 today grow into $1,000 in 10 years at a rate 
of return of 10%. So when we do the process, just remember that this presentation of numbers is important, and we can always interpret this out of Excel, but back into a natural narrative, which will be possibly more helpful when we're talking about payments with a generalized audience.